What would happen if you were to free fall into Uranus? All right, I'll start you off 50,000 kilometers from the surface and just let you go. Let's assume that you're in your spacesuit and you're now free falling. Well, you look down and everything is kind of blurry. It's like, it's like you're wearing the wrong prescription for your glasses, but you can make out these storm patterns. Well, these storms are fast. Exactly 480 kilometers fast, that's right. These are just violent, violent storms. Well, you don't really care about that right now because that's far off. All you care about is whatever's down below. Though it's still hazy, it's still blue. You're telling yourself, all right, I'm gonna get down there and I'm gonna go see it. But before that, you decide to look around and you actually see the rings of Uranus. But they're black because they're covered in soot. Everywhere around you are these hydrocarbons, just very, very small amounts of hydrocarbons around you. And as these rings go through the atmosphere, they get covered in soot. So they turn black and you look around, you see black. You look down, you see blue, just blurry blue. So you tell yourself, all right, I'm gonna get down there. But it'll take you about an hour. All right, so let's travel in time. You know, it's an hour later and things are starting to get interesting. You're leaving the thermosphere and, and starting to enter the stratosphere. There's really nothing interesting in the stratosphere except you're about to enter the troposphere. That's right, there's nothing interesting in the stratosphere. <laughs> so you enter the troposphere and right at the top layer of the troposphere is actually haze. You know the blurry stuff that you, you know, you're looking down and everything's blurry? Well, you just pass that cloud and everything is just clear. And it gets cold, the coldest temperature in any planet. But it's not the cold that you should be worried about. It's the pressure. You're about to enter ammonium and hydrogen gas down below. And once you enter them, assuming that you survive through them and your suit doesn't leak and your suit can protect you from it, as you enter these gases, the pressure above you builds up until your suit can no longer take it. A uh, world record for human dive without any suit is, I forgot what the distance was, but there was 50 bars of pressure. One bar is a typical atmosphere that I'm experiencing right now. 50 times that is what happened to this person that did the world record. A typical suit, diving suit, can withstand about 70 bars. But in order to reach the actual liquid of uranium, uranium, the liquid of Uranus, you need to withstand 200 bars worth of pressure. So you need a submarine. All right, let's switch you out of your spacesuit and into a submarine. And you are now falling from the sky into this blue yonder down below. What causes this blue? It's methane. Um, I'm gonna link to a few videos in the description or somewhere at the end of this video so that you guys can kind of check out some cool facts about Uranus. You're free falling on a submarine in Uranus. Right now, everything turns from space black to just blue, and you can't really see anything, and winds are just pounding you right now, but you can't really tell because there's, there's no way to tell that winds are hitting you, except for your instruments spinning like crazy. So you finally reach the end of the troposphere, and you're expecting this big impact because you know, like Earth, when you go from air into water and you fall into water, you're just all of a sudden gonna hit the water and splash everywhere and you're gonna get slowed down and probably die. But in this case, it's actually gonna be a gradual transition from the gas into liquid. So your submarine would most likely survive. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel like you're being slowed down, but you're probably gonna survive. And what is this? Thing that you're in right now. And by the way, everything is black. I mean, it used to be blue up there, but now there's really no light coming in right now because you're in the water. Actually, it's not water, it's water and ammonia. And it's not really ice. I mean, we do say that Uranus is an ice giant, but it's not really ice. It's a super, super thick liquid. And yeah, they do say ice, but up there in space, they consider ice to be anything that has a melting point greater than 100 Kelvin. So in this case, it's still liquid. And that's right. Uranus is liquid through and through. Even the core, because it's molten, it's liquid. So you're in this liquid sea of thick, watery ammonia, 
what do you do? Well, you decide you're gonna go deeper. You're gonna see how far you can go down into Uranus. So you keep going down, you keep going down, and eventually you will die because of the pressure. There is nothing that we have ever built that can survive the just immense pressures in, a, in the core of a planet, or at least an ice giant. So you die and that's unfortunate, but you know, humans are made out of carbons. We are carbon life form. So a lot of us is carbon. So what would happen if your body kept sinking well, the immense pressure would most likely crush your body and you would most likely be turned into diamonds. Freaking mind blown. <laughs> now, the, the one question that I have that I haven't seemed to found an answer for is whether or not you, diamond you, is gonna be liquid or solid because down there, there is enough pressure near the core of 8,000, um, I think, it, no, it's 5,000 Kelvin near the core, and the melting point for diamond is 4,000. So there might be enough leeway for you to actually become liquid diamond, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure with that. All I know is you turn into diamond. Well, anyway. <laughs> That's it for me, guys, and thanks a lot for watching. Uh, again, I'm gonna put links to the, these cool videos. Um, I forgot what the names of them are, but check them out and learn about Uranus. And it is, it is pronounced Uranus, not Uranus. <laughs> All right, that's it for me, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.